right. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for being here with me and saying yes to an interview and being part of the KB community. Uh, Michelle, Dr. Michelle Schreider is the director of the Recall Healing Institute of USA. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. And you have extensive experience on the topic of recall healing. And you've done many lectures throughout the U.S. and different countries throughout the world in which you explain how this um, protocol, this uh, healing therapy could be benefit so many patients or people that are struggling with chronic illnesses, especially with cancer. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. That's so, awesome. But it does work on every illness and, you know, even behavior. So it sort of covers cancer, but so much beyond that. So that's what I love about it because it really is a, a way of thinking. Yeah, for sure. So um, I've had the honor uh, and the uh, blessing to work with you for a number of years. You, one of my favorite doctors and um, in my healing walk, um, you know, I remember connecting with you through, um, the first year when I started my, my healing journey. And uh, on the first call that you and I got, I remember I just could not deal with the emotional stuff that you just brought on the call. It was just so um, impacting because it was so loaded with truth that I had no idea that you know someone that didn't know me could have so much knowledge just based on my diagnosis, my symptoms, and it was, I was just so impressed that it really um, shook me. And it, it really, I, I, at that time, I remember I wasn't ready to deal with all of that. And I put it away. And I did not connect with you for two years. Yeah. I think that's how, how long yeah. it was. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And during that timeline, I remember um, uh, just focusing a lot on my nutrition and supplements and the different therapies that I had to follow. And I did not want to do the emotional work, but then later I came to understand how important the emotional state is on your overall health. And I honestly, you know, six years later, I can tell you that I am, I am convinced that our emotional being is so, so important. And this is where uh, I believe most um, cancers are rooted. You know, mm -hmm. I think that um, other factors like our nutrition, our environment, um, they do have an impact. But if we have an issue at an emotional level that hasn't healed, everything else would just be a trigger that would unfold into like possibly a cancer. Exactly. Uh, You're such a good student. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I pass. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Less. <laughs> oh, awesome. So I want to talk to you today about the, um, I'm calling this um, um, interview, Unlocking the Secret of Illness. Awesome. I, yeah, I think that's how we're going to call it. And so I want, I would love for you to tell us what is the relationship that, um, that you have seen in your experience with our emotions and our health? Because a lot of people don't really connect the two they feel like it's more about the supplements i'm taking again and you know that was me or the food that i'm eating which all of that is important but i, I feel like um it deserves um for all of us to pay attention to our emotional health and i would love for you to just elaborate on that a little bit more the connection between our emotional well-being and our overall health absolutely so what we say in recall healing is when we don't give issue to something it goes in our tissues. So likewise, when we give issue to it, when we talk about the things that we have experienced in our life, it doesn't have to go into our body. But if we don't talk about the things that have been hurtful, uh, have caused us anger, there's been injustice, and we sort of brush it under the carpet, like many of us do, and especially culturally, where you know you don't air your dirty laundry you don't speak about ill of your parents you don't do any of that so we tend to brush things under the carpet well that sort of festers in our body and and it makes for our brain to say hey you sort of need a turbo function to get you through this this challenge that you're having this pain that you're having and typically it doesn't happen the first time 
it's after a series of the same kinds of feelings and the same kinds of events that that you have had in your life and then it's like it's like that one more drop to the water that's already flowing and then then that happens you know yeah, yeah for sure so um I think it was you that I heard you say that the mind may forget, but the body will remember. For that sure. Is yes. Like there's books that are written on this now. Like it was so beautiful for me to see that there's many doctors that are understanding this, this same principle. And honestly, it's been for thousands of years the, the in traditional Chinese medicine, in Ayurvedic medicine, they very were they were very much aware that there is a mind body a connection but somewhere along the line with several scientists they said that there's this disconnect between the mind and the body and so i think that that's what sort of drew us away from sort of paying attention to what am i feeling to what is causing this in terms of what i'm eating what i'm not exercising or these kinds of things but if I pull myself back to this place and look at why this came, what is my body telling me? How am I disconnected or how am I not feeling it? This allows us to sort of move forward, pay attention, and it allows our body to turn off the switch. Right, right. And I clearly remember um, having many aha moments with you uh, during our time of, of work together. Um, uh, many moments where I um, discovered, you know, uh, information that it wasn't available into my conscious awareness. Um, so, you know, sometimes we feel like you said, we brush it off, you know, we, we go through situations in life or even especially in childhood. I feel like that is something that all of us endure. You know, we all have some sort of um, emotional uh, woundedness, I guess, or some sort of impact that we encounter as children. And somehow, you know, throughout our time in adulthood, we just forget or we just become busy and we just brush it off. But like you said, you know, the body uh, stores it in our tissues. So can you tell us what would, um, what would define trauma on a person? Like why, what, you know, how, how, how would you define that? So, so trauma, oftentimes when people think of trauma, they think of war, they think of like really big things. But when we talk about trauma, we're talking really about the stress of the daily life, that our day in, day out stress, the things that we are thinking about, like, why does my son do this? Why does my daughter do this? Why does my husband do this over and over? Even after I've asked them not to do this, they still do it. Why? So all of these things, so it can be a big stress, can be a big trauma. I lose my job. I mean, and even if we consider about COVID, many people have lost their jobs and, and some people have lost their loved ones. So it has, that can be a big trauma for sure. Right. Most of the time, it's the day in and day out stressors that build and build and build and we just keep brushing it under and brushing it under and 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 maybe we might even be embarrassed so we don't want to talk about it because it's the same problem that we're having so you know and like and you've talked about it and talked about it and your friends are like why don't you do this or why don't you do that but you're not ready to do that or this or you know or something hasn't shifted yet it's that and then when we don't talk about it it really does go into our body and it's like this turbo function that takes over. So we, and we call healing, we don't look at it as a malfunction. We look at it more like a turbo function. This manifestation is helping me based on my feelings and this trauma. So that trauma is big, ongoing, or one stress can reawaken all previous stresses. So we can look at this. So for instance, I'll just share this, like I was working with a woman today and she has a breast cancer. And when she was three months old, her mom left and then she came back. But then when she's 18 months, she goes and she takes her daughter to live with another family and she leaves her while she's sleeping. And so when she wakes up, mom and dad aren't there. 
She has no idea that she has to stay there. And so she's screaming. Mm -hmm. This is for a child, a big deal. Even though now she's 54 years old, she didn't really think about these things anymore. You know, so it's that stress on top of another stress of mom leaving. Dad was sick at, at, in Greece and she had to go and be with him. Well, the kids got shipped to another relative and they're young. They don't understand it. So these are the kinds of stresses that we're talking about as trauma. Right. And, and like the example that you just shared with us, um, it was a child, right? It was a, a young, mm -hmm. young baby. Um, but that gets stored in the body and it could manifest later on. When yes. That's why when we do, when we work, we look at the whole timeline because it's never just about what's going on right now. So what's going on right now is symbolic of what has happened many other times in the person's life, generally beginning even before the child is born. So, and even in our ancestors of what number, you know, it's so, it's so intricate. And, you know, for me, that's how it shows divine plan, God's plan, you know, like you say. Yeah. Fascinating to me. You know, I've learned that with you that sometimes like you're right, you encounter a circumstance where it's over repeating itself over and over again and you feel like you don't know what to do anymore you like you said you get sick and tired of talking about it but it's still there and like you said i think it's still manifesting because it needs healing and needs to be readjusted it needs to change right. so that conflict is still manifested because it needs change and like you said it maybe it's not even from our timeline it could be from the past generations before us mm -hmm. right and it's not it's even our stuff Right. It's not even our stuff, but it still will. If we end up having some kind of illness or disease, it means that we also have the conflict and our ancestors had the conflict. So based on our birth order number, our name, because if we carry somebody else's name, then we can experience some of the same events thinking that it's just us because in our world, it is just us, you know, but when you look that, it, oh my gosh, this happened to the same relative, even today is super interesting where, and it's like every day I get these stories. And so it's like, oh, all the number threes in this, in this family were in the military. It's wow. like, you know, you see like these patterns, the same profession same illnesses and and so it's it's fascinating yeah so i've seen and i've met many people that have had the same illness from generation after generation and it's unexplainable and you know people will say it's bad luck but um before we dive in into that a little more i would love for you to explain a little bit more what recall healing is and what it does because when i first heard you on that first call that like i shared when we first started all of this information to me just seems so so shocking and so out there that you know it, it was just hard to believe but i would like for you to really um you know uh just explain to us a little bit more of what recall healing is and how it works Sure. So, and it's true. Like most people think, oh my gosh. And even when you hear all of it, it feels overwhelming. It but, is like this new age trend. or yeah, it. Yeah. The bottom line is it never goes against biology. And when you start to think of it that, oh, I might have a stomach cancer because it was hard to digest something in my life. When you think of it like that, then it gives you a better understanding. And so it's not so big and so overwhelming. And so it's about biology. It's about really common sense. And so it makes sense. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Of course, we're going to experience certain things that our ancestors experienced. And so in recall healing, we have the science behind what we do. And this comes from German New Medicine. And Dr. Homer discovered this science by the, through the death of his own son when he developed testicular cancer six months after the death. And he, he thought, hey, I eat well, I exercise, I have a spiritual practice, I do everything. This, this must be the, the, you know, the connection. So he went back to Germany and he started studying CAT scans and he found that there were these little these little dots and they look like bullseyes in the brain when a person had the same kinds of cancers. So he was able to get them to talk and people started to heal. 
So he put this whole system together that he says that we're like a rocket or psyche, automatic brain and body, and that everything that we experience in our life is processed through our psyche. Our you know, the, our education, our values, where we're raised, our culture, you know, all of those things is processed. When uh, our automatic brain is the next level, and this is our, our uh, amygdala, our hippocampus, our, it's to keep us alive from moment to moment. So it's not concerned about like rationalizing anything. It's the best solution in the moment. So the, that, that brain will take over when a person has a big trauma or an ongoing trauma and saying, hey, you are spinning your wheels. You can't eat, you can't think, you have, you're ruminating about this problem, you have cold extremities. We're gonna take it out of your psyche and we're gonna put it into your body according to the felt experience. So if you have a conflict in your nest or with your closest people, then that might impact the breast. If you have something going on in the family where there's this big misunderstanding, that might impact the stomach. And so the brain sends this to help us and it only has itself to work with. If we could actually give our anger or hurt or our frustration to somebody else, then it wouldn't have to stay in our body. But our, our brain doesn't have these little hands to say, here, here's my anger, <laughs> okay? It only has itself. So it downloads there. And then when we find a solution, our brain can then let go of that. If it's a big stress in the beginning, then it can be a big repair. And sometimes a repair is a cancer. A myocardial infarct is a, is a repair. So we, okay. when you say repair, it's that is really fascinating what you just said right now. So cancer, to look at cancer as a repair phase. Yes. You know, it's a symptom of a conflict and it's inviting you to repair it. Yes. It right? Yes. And that's what, and so your body, once you can discover and see, Dr. Hammer went into repair after the death of his son. Right. He found a solution. It wasn't a pleasant solution that his son died. But he was now not looking for a way to keep him alive. And for a man, the testicles are the way that he gives life. Mm -hmm. So, so he's, his brain is sending, oh, you need powerful semen to give your son life. And that's how it works. And so, oh. now, oh, you found a solution. You don't need that manifestation anymore. So a little tumor is created to repair that it's like a scab as far you know when you think of it like when you scrape your knee and a scab comes it's repairing same thing on the internal part of our body and it's fascinating to me that um, for you i've learned that there are many different um the different cancers that are out there are connected to different organs and different emotions in the body mm -hmm. right yes. like when we and i first talked you told me Oh, well, thyroid cancer is connected to injustice. And I, that immediately resonated with me, you know, at a, even at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with everything else that escalated and you were unfolding um, at that time, you know? So it's fascinating how each cancer is connected to that emotion. And it's just an invitation for your body to just repair. Right. Wow. Wow. Um, so what it, can you walk us briefly? What would be the process of someone that is facing a cancer diagnosis and they're doing all the you know, physical therapies that they can, but if they wanted to follow a recall healing uh, protocol, what would be the process for that? What, what would okay, that for sure. And then I'll, I'll, I'll finish in doing that. So it's a perfect question because I gave you the science, but then Dr. Sabah was a student of Dr. Hama. And, and he had a Jewish background, plus he was a psychologist. He would go into the people's homes, he would talk to them. And so he discovered many things and he knew the work of Dr. Mark Trache and also Dr. Uh, Anne Schut Anne Anselin Schutzenberger, who worked on what we call the timeline and the family tree. And so Dr. Sabah said, a person that is ill, they only have 10% in their awareness as why well they're ill. This is when you hear, if you say like to somebody, hey, why do you think you're, you're sick? They'll give you some, some, you know, some things. Stress, oh, I've been working so hard. Yes, this is true, but that's not it. So we, we look at it like an iceberg. And so we wanna dive in. 
And so the first thing we look at is the timeline. And this is where we like the universe is mathematically equated. And so everything in our life, the good, the bad, and the indifferent, it repeats. And so everything that happened between zero when you're born to the, to the moment that you leave your home to become independent, including food, shelter, and clothing, this becomes what we call the cycle of autonomy. And so the brain says, oh, this is awesome. We kept her alive or him alive. And all these things were experienced. So we imprint this in and then well, somehow it's going to repeat in the next cycle and the next cycle. For me, my cycle of autonomy is 20 years and five months. So everything between zero and 20 and five, the good, the bad, the indifferent, it repeats in the next 20 and five months and the next 20 and five months. So when I start, when things start to come in my life right now, I look at some of these things. Oh, well, what else happened? And what else happened? And as I process them, this pattern can stop showing up. Okay. So it will go on all of our life until we're 200, but we want to give ourselves a long, happy life. So we always say 200, yeah. you know? <laughs> okay. But we want to look at all of the aspects of the injustice. Okay. And also related to thyroid is time. Oh, I got to hurry up and do this. Oh, I wasn't in time to say this. Oh, I didn't get to say goodbye when that person died. So these are all things that can, can impact the thyroid. So, yeah. so we look at all of those aspects related to how you're feeling. We name it, we claim it so that we can dump it. And then we move a little bit deeper into the waterline and we look at, at what we call the project purpose. So this is 18 months before a child is born. So what was it like 18 months before you left your house? This gives you insight as to what it was like before you're born, 18 months, okay? Wow, that I didn't know. Okay, so, so that it's important because it gives you insight. If it's a chaotic time and you're having trouble with mom, my mom and I were like, ooh, this the whole time. Well, it was super traumatic for my mom, very, uh, very problematic with her mom before she left the home too. So it's there, 18 months. And then what's it like the first year of life? Okay, what's it like when you move out of your home? If it's a good time, then it was a good time for mom and dad. If it's a hard time, it was a hard time for mom and dad. And so it just gives us an opportunity to say, oh, wow, this was going on for mom and dad. I don't have to carry that for the rest of my life. So really 80%, it's like about bringing 80% into the awareness, okay? So that, that then we can do some work to name it and claim it and process it. So we do a person's timeline, then we look at their project purpose, and then finally we drop a little bit deeper and we look at the ancestors. So Anne Schutzenberger, she would do a person's genogram and what she began to understand was that there was this pattern of three. She called it the magic square. And that one, two, and three, they were separated from each other, the, the children with these birth order numbers. But as she looked above, all of the one, four, seven, ten children, they lined up and they might have the same kinds of, of professions. It might have a similar illness. There might be early deaths or accidents. The two, five, eight, and 11 row, and the three, six, nine, 12 row. And so we want to know what number a person is because we want to see if there's any of these patterns going on. Not too long ago, I had a guy who had a lymphoma. We did his family tree and we discovered everyone in the family tree. He was a number three, actually. And everybody in the family tree that was a number three died an early death of a cancer. Oh, wow. Okay. And so he's like, oh, am I going to die? And I'm like, no, good news is you see it in your awareness and now it doesn't have to return as a destiny. So right. once you bring things into the awareness, you give your brain an opportunity to let go of those invisible uh, ties, the invisible, they, the, their strings, the ties to our ancestors through our name or through our birth order number. So we bring this whole thing together and we build a puzzle. And we keep going because it's a work in progress, but that's sort of how we go about doing it. So, wow, that is pretty impressive. Yeah, <laughs> I am a witness to that because I am a living proof of walking and doing the work with you on our emotional 
yeah. level in everything that we've discovered. So it's been an amazing um, experience and journey. And like I said in my blog, an opportunity to live differently, you know, to live again. So for sure. It's, so, and it's so cool. And it's so cool to watch you and how how the awarenesses have, have continued to help you to heal and grow. And it's been so amazing to walk on that journey with you. And I remember the first session and then reconnecting yeah, and, and that, and it's, and it's true. It, it happens when it's supposed to happen. And then look what happens. Like you, when you're ready, you're ready. And then you're, you're on your way. Absolutely. I think, that, you know, maybe, like I said, at a conscious level, I had no idea that I, I wasn't ready. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> For sure, right? And, you know, what you were sharing with me at the time, I, I just said, no, 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 I can't deal with this. No, no, no. It was just too much, you know. Yeah. And then that's another thing that I've noticed that um, for some people, it could be too overwhelming to look at, you know. So it's okay to take little steps. And, you know, mm -hmm. but the, the good thing is that we do the work. I think that is so important to do the work. Yeah. It's, it's like, like and, and when we say like what you just said, it's progress, not perfection. It's right. one step. And the alternative is to stay in the pain and the hurt and the suffering. And, and that's the motivation. And many times our children motivate us because when we heal, our children heal. And many times when we see our children suffering at all in any way, through behaviors, through the way they feel about themselves, you know, whatever it may be, it motivates us to say, okay, what is going on? What are they reflecting? What do I need to work on? Because our children are a mirror. And so is our relationship with our spouse, a mirror for what we need to work on. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I can definitely say that I'm a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> All of us are, girl, for sure. Uh, for sure, yeah. So my next question would be, I have um, people that read my blog, and I'm so blessed and excited that um, I have people that read my blog in different areas of the world. Um, and sometimes I get messages of people asking, where can I find a biodentist, let's say? Where can I find, let's say, someone like you? In your case, you're able to really work with clients all over the world, right? Yes. Through technology. <laughs> Thank God. Yes. But yes. let's say, um, I would assume you have connections, like let's say it's someone that speaks only Spanish and they want to do this work. You, um, is there a website or somewhere that they can go and look into it? So in terms of um, Spanish speaking, the, it's like we're growing this. And so it hasn't totally happened. I have, I, what I generally do is I work with people that interpret also. And so that's usually how it's happened. So I don't speak Russian, but I have a Russian interpreter and I have a Ukrainian and, okay. a, and Spanish interpreters that I use that, that can sit with us and, and work that way. So oh, that's okay. one thing that's we can do. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that so, totally makes sense. I have my other doctor in Peru and he uses interpreters all the time. So that is wonderful. That is good to know that you have that option. Yeah. So um, that's the way that I, that I work. And as we grow, you know, I'm getting ready to start an institute next year. And so there's people that are coming up in recall healing. And so we'll have more practitioners soon, but right now they can, they can get help from me. <laughs> <laughs> That is great. Um, just to, I want to throw it out there for someone that is impacted and, you know, it really resonates this, all, everything that you're sharing with us today, um, but they don't have the means perhaps to really get to work with you directly. Um, what are the steps that you can suggest to them um, if they're dealing with a cancer diagnosis, but again, they don't have the means to work with you directly? What could they do right now? Well, I for sure. Like there's lots of videos that are free. Uh, and so you can, you can start to get some insight that way. And like I said today, I gave you the basic tools today. Okay. And so do your timeline. Okay. And then find out what, what are you feeling right now? What are the things that you haven't addressed in your life that you're not at peace about? Anything that you're not at peace about, you have to ask, am I willing to die for that? Okay. Oh, that is so good. I actually shared that with a, a handful of people and that is so true. You know, you have sometimes we just get so angry with, you know, our day or, you know, we just get so focused on the negative 
addictive stuff that, you know, the hurt or the pain or something that someone did to us. Um, and yeah, I remember that, you know, yeah. am I willing to die for that? Exactly. So, so it awesome. really like encourages us to go, um, we do mini meditations. So look up meditations online and do frequencies online. Like there's so much online that can, you know, that a person can help, but the bottom line is coming to peace. Okay. And is this an ancestral issue? Who do you line up with? You know, what are the, what are the children? What was the, the traumas of the family? Just processing these things is going to help a person to begin that healing journey. And really like, I totally get that the means piece. And, and it's really like, I'm, my goal is to teach people of these tools that everyone should have these tools that we give them to our children. We learn mind body skills. We learn that breathing, like, you know, yes, it's life, but literally breathing and, and moving and nutrition and mindfulness, they all work together, but work on your emotions because that's bottom line. And if a person doesn't work on their emotions, it will never be resolved totally. It will come out in different ways. Maybe you heal of cancer, which I always, you know, pray. And yet it, maybe something else happens or, you know, so process, what is it that you haven't addressed or what is that pebble in your shoe? Yeah. For me personally, you know, I, I don't like to impose my faith onto people, but I love to share my journey. And for me personally, it would be going to God, you know, prayer, you know, um, just soaking yeah. in his presence and uh, engage in prayer and just surrendering that emotion to, to the Lord and asking him for help and guidance. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I absolutely like love everything that you're saying. It really resonated with me. You have helped me so much throughout my journey. It's been amazing. And it's been an amazing journey of discovery for sure. Yeah. That's and, a beautiful thing, right? That we learn yeah. who we are, what we're about and it's been yeah, such a things that we hold on uh, from the past that we don't even have awareness of, uh, you know, like I said, from our parents or our grandparents, previous generations, not even our stuff, but you mentioned how our energy keeps passing down. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we encounter the same scenarios too, right? Because Absolutely. they haven't been really solved. Even at the same ages, even in the same circumstances, it's so like, I, I say, almost every day, if not three times a day, <laughs> you cannot make this up because real life and how it repeats and the manifestations and the things that happen, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, I too, I'm cautious, you know, it's like, I wish that we lived in a world that you didn't have to be super cautious, but I do believe that we have to, to know that, that we are in divine hands that we are godly, that we are loved. And it really begins with that. So many times people don't see their own value because they were a mistake or, but, but the truth is nobody is a mistake. Everybody that is here is supposed to be here. We may not have come in the greatest of circumstances, but you would not be here if you were not supposed to be here. And I think that changing hundred percent is change the perspective and you change everything. Wow. So I think that if you can change perspective, that you begin that the healing process. Right. And you're a perfect example, Karen, and I'm just yeah. so blessed. And that you're sharing this is yeah. wonderful. And I'm just I'm so in awe of your discipline and doing it. So thank you so much, Michelle. I, you know, you've been such a staple piece in my healing journey. I am so so grateful for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know that. Like the yeah. medical me too, and have. I am grateful of you too. Yeah. It's, so before I know I, we, I already taken so much of your time, um, but before I let you go, I want to um, encourage uh, people that are watching this to just remember a testimony that you can share with us working with cancer patients. Have you witnessed people just having a spontaneous healings when doing the work, uh, your work with you? I've, I've seen so many amazing stories and, yeah. you know, and, and the most the one that is so near and dear to my heart is the, that my grandson had a brain tumor and we wow. used all of these tools. We used recall healing. 
we understood it was a big process of, of discovering and I even needed my mentor because sometimes when you're too close, it's hard to see it, but he was only five years old. And so his life experiences, he had all of these experiences related to protection and integrity, which is where his, the brain tumor was in the cerebellum, which is related to protection and integrity. And so he had this. And in his life, in his project purpose, his father was, my son, was, um, he was threatened with his life, okay? And so for when a, when a parent, something big happens with the parent, we're from California, right? So the, it's like the earthquake, it's like the epicenter is the parents, but the, the shock is felt to the children and the children will download it load it and then there was an ancestral pattern too where my father said something related to my ex-husband and it was a big deal and so so adam carried this and at perfect time space intersection the best solution was a, a baseball sized brain tumor and so and so when we named the story when we claimed the story when we talked about it and talked to his picture he was a different kid in two hours two hours wow. two hours and so wow. his color had returned he and wow. so um, and this is the deal like most of the time i really love you know integrative medicine and just doing on the holistic side he had to have surgery but the beautiful thing was that his the tumor was benign because we did the work mm -hmm. and that is the key if you when you do the work and even if you have to have other kinds of interventions you know we always work first on this natural side and doing this and then if we need other interventions then we have that opportunity as well and so he's 10 he's doing fantastic uh, that's awesome. um, i've seen pancreatic cancers breast cancers liver cancers like serious cancers uh repair because of of doing the work wow and i believe it i mean i'm witness of so many steps that you and I worked on, but one that really um, impacted me a great, great deal, like most recently that um, my cousin was, which was so close to me, passed away from cancer a few months ago. And I developed this pain in my neck, you know, and I think one of my doctors have said, well, this is, this could be your sense of area, you know, and maybe this is why you manifest in pain. But when you and I got on that call and I explained and downloaded everything that I was feeling and you, you know, I walked with you through all the process of all those emotions of the hurt, the pain, the anger of how she left, why she left. Um, you know, she developed this cancer very quickly and, and, and passed very quickly. Um, but I recognized the emotional woundedness that she was carrying, but you walked me through all those steps and that pain that I was experiencing back then, it just disappeared. It was like magical. It, it it's just amazing. <laughs> it was it's just so I was awesome. like, wow. I just couldn't believe it. But we prayed. We finished our conversation in prayer in releasing all of that. And it was just amazing how our body just carries all those emotions. And then when we um provide that step uh or give that ourselves that space to work on ourselves and, and process those emotions and we release them like you said we name them we claim them and let them go mm -hmm. amazing things happen so yeah absolutely name so, it claim it jump it and this is so beautiful i love that that you yeah. have that, that experience yeah yeah thank you so much michelle for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge with my audience and um for working with me personally i really really appreciate you and um, I bless you and I bless your work and um, thank you so much. Hopefully we'll have you again uh, in the near future. <laughs> yeah, that'll be great. I would yeah. love that. Yeah. So, so and, and I'm blessing to you and to, to the community and it's really wonderful to be a part. So thank you for thank adding you so to much, your team. Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> any last words that you want to say before um, to any cancer patient before we, we say goodbye? Cancer is not a death sentence. There's always hope. There's always a way. And so work your issues, you know, give it, give it issues so that it gives out of your tissues and, and trust that 
you didn't get that way overnight. So sometimes it can take some time to get back to the normal mode of operating. So hang in there, be patient, be kind to yourself. And, you know, one step at a time, progress, not perfection. <laughs> Gotta remember that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Thank you again, Michelle. It was great talking to you today. Thank you.